White House and Democrats are outraged about the AIG bonuses tonight, but do they have a reason to be? Now, increasingly, it appears that they are to blame for this latest boondoggle. And that is our headline this Tuesday night, day number 57 of the most liberal agenda in American history, caught red-handed. Now, first we learned today that Connecticut Democratic Senator Chris Dodd slipped an amendment into the stimulus package last month that protected bonuses agreed to before February 11, 2009, meaning the AIG bonuses that Senator Dodd tells Fox News this evening that he wasn't responsible for, well, the February deadline. But come on, isn't he still a friend of Angelo and got that special mortgage deal? Well, now Dodd is trying to cover his tracks by proposing a new tax on the bonuses paid by AIG, an attempt to undo his own damage. Of course, it is worth mentioning that Dodd is also the largest recipient of AIG political contributions with more than $100,000 in the 2008 cycle. Meanwhile, the White House was also caught red-handed today as the public learned that the AIG bonuses were not new. They first came to the attention of the Bush administration last September, and apparently Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner, well, he knew about them last week. The president had promised to address the issue of executive compensation, but administration officials still appeared on the Sunday shows last weekend and feigned outrage, pretending that they had just learned about this entire debacle. We're the first people to be angry, so absolutely Secretary Geithner uh, has been furious. George, look, uh, there are a lot of terrible things that have happened in the last 18 months, but what's happened at AIG is the most outrageous. What that company did the way it was not regulated, the way no one was watching, what's proved uh, necessary, it is outrageous. And White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs got hammered by the press corps about this earlier today at his daily spin session. Secretary Geithner learned about the bonuses, I suppose, Wednesday of last week or, or around then. Can you walk us through what members of your administration uh, learned about the bonuses and when they learned about it? Uh, I don't have a particular TikTok in front of me. Clearly, somebody dropped the ball. Somebody didn't tell Secretary Geithner well, about this or Secretary... Let's also understand that these are contracts that existed, as I understand it, and I, I prefaced this yesterday by uh, not surprisingly telling you I'm not a contracts lawyer. Why didn't you know about it until last week? Well, I... Uh, Again, I will check on some exact TikTok. You said you haven't talked to the president yet about when he learned mm -hmm. about these bonuses. Could I just put in a request that you ask him I, I when will, he learned? I will, I will write that down. <laughs> First of all, why haven't you asked the president when he learned about it? There are a lot of questions I haven't asked the president. All right, and joining, I don't know whether to laugh or cry, joining us tonight is a man who has been against the AIG bailout since the very beginning, Senator John McCain. Senator, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for having me on. Senator, 73 AIG employees as a result of these bonuses that we paid for, not forget about we, the American taxpayers paid for, they became millionaires as a result of these bonuses. In one particular case, a so-called retention bonus of four and a half million dollars for a guy that didn't even stay on the job. And the Washington Post is pointing out today that we knew about all of this last year. So why are they feigning outrage? I don't know, but I, I will say again, if we hadn't bailed them out, then the, they would have gone bankrupt and all of this stuff would have been the subject of the courts and reorganization. Instead, we poured hundred and how many billion dollars into this failing institution and now we have everybody scrambling around. Uh, it, it is uh, incredible that uh, the Treasury Secretary knew about these bonuses and didn't tell anybody or certainly Congress was not informed. Well, well, and I think this is a very major point here. Now, I pointed out, I found the New York Times article, we discussed this a little bit last night, uh, November 2008, Timothy Geithner, uh, he was the guy, they claim, the New York Times, hardly the vast right-wing conspiracy, they claim he was the guy that put all of this together. And I think it raises a question, we'll be debating in our next segment, should Timothy Geithner be fired? Uh, I, I, th I think it's too early to because we need to find out all the facts. But the fact, but the reality is, when we decided to bail them out, then we decided to invest. Uh, you know, it was the tar baby. What's this? The fourth package that they've gotten. Uh, 
of tens of billions of dollars. Uh, again, I, I forgot. You know, you can give the number later on. I think it's 120 billion. Uh, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, and 165. 165. 165, and there was a provision, I'm told, that was attempted by Senators Wyden and Snow to limit executive compensation, and that was killed. So, but look, it also means when you do these massive bills that nobody reads for weeks and even months, then you're going to get this all kinds of this stuff going on, including protectionism and starting a trade war with Mexico, which we did on the spending bill. You know, Senator, I don't know whether to laugh or cry as we've lost $11 trillion of of wealth in this country and you're telling us as a prominent senator we have we have bills and nobody reads them I, it's mind-numbing it's, it's like try, trying to go to school I, I find it mind-numbing senator I was on I was on the floor it was a, I think 800 page package on one side and a thousand eleven hundred page package all the bill that we were voting on and passing which nobody read we'll be finding out stuff that was in it as I as I mentioned yeah. to you for months it was full of not only pork but policy changes this trade war we're starting with Mexico by America in the last one protectionism is on the rise and our friends and allies around the world won't like it you know I, if I could think of one positive of outcome that may be a result of all of this as the American people focus their attention on it is maybe this will end bailout mania. One of the things that AIG did with the money, and maybe you can explain how this is possible, but 20 billion of our taxpayer dollars went to bail out European banks. Senator, did you see that in the Wall Street Journal? I saw, I saw that European banks were bailed out with American taxpayers' dollars. That's the real outrage here. Frankly, in many respects, it's far more of an outrage than the uh, what, 100 million, 100 and some million dollars in executive compensation? 20 billion to foreign banks. Yeah. Let me ask you, you can't Senator, make it up. In, in, in retrospect, you know, and I would argue this was probably just bad luck, bad timing for you and your presidential campaign, and you suspended the campaign and you were criticized for it. You did support the original TARP plan. We, that was supposed I, to I solve all these problems. Do, do you, in retrospect, do you regret it at all? Well, I regret very much the way TARP was mishandled, but I suspended my campaign because Americans had just lost $1.2 trillion in the stock market in the 700-point uh, plummet. I, I had to come back and do what I think is right when, economies, when America's economy is in deep trouble. And uh, we were told that if, if we did not vote for that, that America's economy would collapse. Now, yeah. uh, I think that it wasn't so much the vote for it, and, and I oppose any uh, since then, obviously, but I think the key to this is is the way that it was terribly mishandled. Right. Let, 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 let me just shift gears, because we're going to debate whether or not Tim Geithner should sure. be fired in, in, in a second here. I have one, well, actually, two national securities. I'll fold it into one to make it easier for you. Number one is the proposal that the administration would have wounded warriors have to pay for their own health care. And, and secondly, as I look at the uh, Obama mission in Afghanistan, I, I, I've got to wonder, it looks, it looks like the Bush plan as far as I can tell. Any, any thoughts or comments? Do you see the same, same similarities as I do? Uh, first of all, on wounded warriors, uh, that, that's not going to happen, and I'm confident that Congress will act if anything like that is, is proposed. On Afghanistan, there's a big debate going on within the administration right now. On the one side, there's the minimalist, do what you can and get out, sort of like the strategy we employed in, in Iraq before General Petraeus uh, and the surge strategy. And then there's the others that, no, you've got to go in, you've got to secure, it's going to be long and hard and tough with a second route is the only one that will succeed. All right, Senator, thank you for being with us tonight. We really appreciate it.